ladies and gentlemen, Kelly Corrigan. So the book really came about because I had this flawed assumption that life was linear. I thought that you had your childhood and then you had some seminal event like you got a big job or you got to stay in the fancy presidential suite at the Anatole Hotel or you got married um, and that turned you into an adult which was sort of, in my opinion, an irreversible state. And that's sort of where I thought I was. I was 36 years old. I had moved all the way from Philadelphia to California. I had um, two kids in diapers. I was paying my own bills. I really thought I was all grown up. And then I got this phone call that I had a runaway case of breast cancer and that I'd be in chemotherapy in a week. And I took a deep breath and then I dialed my hotline to my parents. And they came and I knew they would. I knew they would because they always had and I knew they would because I was a mother now. It was so obvious to me that if Georgia were to call me 25 years from now and tell me that she had cancer, I'd just walk right across the country in bare feet to lay my hands on her. And rather than having this experience turn me into an adult overnight, um, it sort of had the reverse effect where I felt like I was living like a child again and I was spending a lot of time in my pajamas and I was eating cookies for breakfast and I was getting presents for no reason at all, which is the sure sign of childhood. Um, and all in all, it was going pretty well. I had a seven centimeter by five centimeter tumor that was really responding well to the chemotherapy. And then after my seventh round, my mom called and said, I don't know how to tell you this, but your father had some blood in his urine and he had a test and he's got bladder cancer. And I thought, oh, this is adulthood. This is the first adult moment of my life. Living in the world without the people who make it a safe place for you, that must be what it is to be grown up. Every other chapter is a flashback to childhood, partially because the book requires comic relief, as does life, and um, certainly disease. And then also because there's a lot to be learned looking at your life that way. You know, if you were to cut up your life into the 30 stories that sort of make you who you are, um, and then put them on index cards on your dining room table, and then start shuffling them around and looking at them in different sequences, I think you would find what I found, which is that the emotional content of our lives doesn't really change that much. You know, vanity is vanity, whether it's because you're putting your hair in Princess Leia buns for your first prom, which some of us did. <laughs> it was a mistake. And my mom tried to tell me. Or whether it's because your hair is falling out in clumps around you, um, the feeling of vanity is the same. My dad is on his way to Oakland, probably clad in his Radnor lacrosse sweats. I am due for my first chemo on Monday morning. With a life driven by sports, sales, and Catholicism, my dad's MO will doubtlessly involve attacking it, staying positive, and having faith. I'm not quite there. I've been so grown up in so many meetings and conversations and appointments lately. Such a big girl, such a good girl. With my dad in the house, I am someone's child again. Just thinking about how good it's going to be to have him around makes me well up. By the time I spot him on the curb at the airport, I am trembling. Thank you so much, I have loved being here.